So, so far we have learnt about the various breakdown mechanisms in various kinds of insulation depending upon the nature of the insulation. What are the various mechanisms through which breakdown can occur? Uh, we are aware that breakdown or at least degradation is a very likely event and such breakdown or such catastrophic failure can lead to unwanted outages of the transmission network and we would of course like to prevent that and to that end now we are going to study about insulation coordination in transmission networks now what do we mean by insulation coordination the purpose of insulation coordination is to ensure that the probability of insulation breakdown is limited to an acceptable value as I have stressed earlier, breakdown is a stochastic process and there is really no way we can ensure that uh, breakdown will be completely eliminated from our system. Breakdown will happen and it is often not possible to design such that breakdown can really be eliminated. It's theoretically possible, but practically it is not going to be possible. We'll see later why. And even if we over-design, even then we cannot rule out completely the possibility of breakdown. So we will not even try to do that. We are not going to try and prevent failure completely, but we are going to reduce the probability of breakdown to an acceptable value. So we will see what we mean by probability of insulation breakdown and how that can be limited. What is an acceptable value? These are the things that we will discuss in insulation coordination. Apart from limiting breakdown to an acceptable value, we will also try to limit breakdown to certain sections of your insulating structure. Insulation has gases, liquids, etc. Some of it is self-restoring. Gases are self-restoring, partly liquids can also be self-restoring, whereas solids are definitely not self-restoring. Now, if you have a breakdown in the self-restoring part of the insulation, if you wait adequate time, the ionized particles will be removed from the gap, from the electrode gaps, and the dielectric material will regain its insulating property. So or, there will be an outage, but all we need to do, all the corrective action that is needed is to just wait. We don't really have to dismantle the system. Whereas if the failure takes place, let's say in a solid dielectric material, we'll have to remove that part from the, uh, from the network. We will have to uh, organize for a uh, replace that with a new part and all that is cumbersome. So what are we trying to do? Through insulation coordination, we are trying to limit the damage. You're trying to limit the damage by decreasing the probability of failure and making sure that a failure is to happen. Failure happens where the insulation is hurt least. How do we do that? To do that, we need two things. We need to know what kind of over voltages we expect at various points in the system. Over voltages will cause breakdown and therefore it is imperative to know that what would be the expected level of over voltages at the point where you're going to connect the instrument or apparatus. Having understood that, we would like to know what kind of insulation is to be provided and what is the breakdown characteristics of the insulation. So will that over voltage cause breakdown? of that particular insulation. We'd have to design the insulation in such a way that so X amount of over voltage does not cause breakdown. And for that, the level, the voltage level of the insulation is not enough. We are interested in what we call the breakdown characteristic of the insulation. And what this is, we will discuss a little later. If you want to figure out what the over voltages are, you need to have a model, a simulation of the entire transmission network or the apparatus that you're interested in, and you have to use that computer simulation to formulate the interconnection between these parts, the various parts of the network, and compute the over voltages. This aspect is not a part of this course. We are not going to discuss it in this course. This is what we learn in power system modeling. That is one aspect. This will give me the over voltages. The next aspect is the breakdown characteristics. We have to determine the characteristics depending upon 
The type of insulation that is used, as I said, one type could be whether it is a self-restoring insulation or not. And there are other things also we will discuss. And the configuration of the insulation, we have to obtain the breakdown characteristics. Once we have this two information from the network, these two have to be coordinated together. And we will compute certain measures of insulation coordination. If you remember, what I said is that insulation coordination attempts to reduce the probability to a certain level. And this measure of the probability of failure is quantified as the risk of failure. I will define risk of failure later. And apart from risk of failure, we have to figure out certain quantities called Whitston voltages. The risk of failure will give me an some important information. The Whitston voltages will give me some important information, which will um, tell me how I should operate the system and how safe my system is. When you perform insulation coordination, so once you have the over voltages, once you know the breakdown characteristics, you put the two together and what do you get? You calculate risk of failure, you calculate what's in voltage. Now, how will you achieve? Suppose you want to reduce or increase the Whitston voltages, you want to reduce the risk of failure, or you think it's okay, I can go up to a higher value. So you would like to, through design, you would like to manipulate these values. Once you have an estimate of these values, you would like to manipulate these values to obtain an acceptable values. And what are the ways in which we can do that? There are two ways in which we can do that. First is obvious, insulation design. If you expect that 400 kV is the over voltage that would appear across an uh, equipment, uh, make sure that the equipment has enough insulation so that it can withstand 400 kV. Actually, it should not be designed to withstand 400 kV, but voltage is higher than 400 kV. That we will discuss later. But whatever be it, once we know the over voltages, we know how much insulation to provide. That is one way. But if we resorted to this as our only technique, we would end up using a lot of insulation. And this is one aspect that I had discussed at the beginning of this course. Remember, insulation is the part of the circuit which is not useful. It is necessary, but smaller, lower the quantity, the smaller the quantity of insulation that you use, less bulky is your equipment, less uh, more economical is your equipment. So you would always like to reduce the amount of insulation and therefore just providing adequate insulation may not be the smartest thing to do. And this is where over voltage control and protection comes in. So you figure out ways to control. This is the level of the over voltage that you expect, but you do not let that entire level of over voltage appear across your insulation. You limit through control and protection schemes, you limit the amount of over voltage that will actually appear across your insulation and then decide what amount of insulation that you want to provide. That would be a more practical or a reliable approach. So we have two means here. Insulation coordination, coordination involves two aspects, two facets. One is insulation design and the second is over voltage control and protection. Now, I'm not going to talk about protection in this course. I will just briefly talk about the principle of protection, but I need to talk about the various kinds of over voltages that we expect in our system. So, this is then algorithmically the methodology for insulation coordination. We need data on the network configuration. We need individual component data. Put them all together to obtain a simulation of the network. Use this network simulation model for network computation to obtain over voltages at various points of interest in the network. On the other hand, you use the same component data. Of course, in this case, we will be using the data for the insulation in your components and obtain the insulation characteristics. Once you have the over voltage comp computation and the insulation characteristics, put them together and through coordination, through performing insulation coordination, obtain the measures of Whitston voltages and risk of failure. So this is what insulation coordination does. 
So therefore, we need to talk about over voltages. Let us quickly look at what are the different kinds of over voltages that are relevant in terms of the transmission network. Uh, grossly speaking, over voltages can be of two types, the internal over voltages and external over voltages. Some over voltages occur from within the system and they also scale with the system voltage, whereas other kinds come from have their sources not in the system itself, but in the atmosphere, in the ambience, and they do not, they're independent of the system voltage. Of course, I'm sure if you're talking about external over voltages in terms of transmission lines, the first kind of over voltage that possibly comes to everybody's mind is the lightning over voltages. Lightning over voltages can be of various kinds, which we will discuss later. Direct lightning strike, indu induced lightning strike, and back flashover. So these are three different kinds of lightning strikes which can cause damage to the transmission network. Other than lightning, which is of course of prime importance, we have any MP, that is nuclear electromagnetic phenomenon and non-nuclear electromagnetic phenomenon. Non, uh, nuclear electromagnetic phenomena are not something that you would routinely uh, expect. This would be of consequence if you are designing power apparatus for use in nuclear environments or in case there is a nuclear accident. But if you have a nuclear accident, your power apparatus are not the only things that you're going to be worrying about. And then you have non-nuclear electromagnetic phenomena, which is, of course, much rarer. An example of that is a magnetic solar storm. So these are about the external over voltages. And obviously, we are going to spend a lot more time on lightning over voltages. Among the internal over voltages, depending upon the time scale of the uh, failure or the transients. The voltages would be transient voltages. So depending, depending on the time scale of this over voltage, they can be divided into three types, transients, temporary and steady state over voltages. Transients examples, I will later tell you uh, what are the time scales related to these kinds of uh, these three different categories. But to give you examples of these over voltages, examples of transient over voltages are the switching over voltages, like closing and reclosing of line, interruption of capacitive and inductive currents, switching on on transformers, fault initiation or fault clearing. All these can result in transient over voltages. And these are the switching over voltages that we are interested in primarily while designing our circuits. Then you have temporary over voltages, which are, of course, of a larger duration, longer duration. And they, those are again caused by uh, system processes like load rejection, Ferranti effect, self excitation, saturation effects, ground faults, or asymmetric faults. Apart from that, there might be some steady state over voltages, which means they would be present from for at least some cycles, not just uh, an instant or so. And examples of steady state over voltages are contacts with circuits of higher voltages, neutral inversion, arcing ground phenomenon, resonance phenomena. So as you can imagine, when you have an arcing resonance to ground, that can be maintained for a longer period than a single line to ground fault. Or when we have resonance phenomena, unless that resonance is broken, it becomes a ongoing uh, over voltage process. So depending upon these, we would have to figure out which are of the highest voltages, which have the highest energy content, and therefore which are likely to be most dangerous to the insulation of the power apparatus. So therefore we will uh, go on to study these over voltages in greater detail. And of course, we will start with lightning over voltages.